All right, now to a critical time for Russia and Ukraine. 30,000 Russian troops now conducting major military exercises just north of the Ukrainian border, while Ukrainian troops also driving up their drills. My co-anchor Terry Moran on the scene for us, still there in Ukraine. Uh, Terry, I understand Russia's Navy effectively cutting off some of Ukraine's access to the Black Sea now. Uh, is this meant to be provocative, and what kind of impact is this having? Well, it sure is meant to be provocative. That The Black Sea coast, that is uh, Ukraine's entire southern coastline. And there, there's a little part of the Black Sea called the Sea of Azov, which is also cut off. So that's their eastern coastline. They are basically blockaded their ports uh, nearly entirely and their coastline from any ships coming, uh, coming or going. They, they do have a, an international legal right to go a few miles al along the coastline. But their ports cannot handle the traffic with just that kind of that kind of access. And so it is provocative. It will hurt the economy. It's only for a few days, but Russia has never done this before. And you combine that with the exercises you were just talking about, those major military exercises, uh, the largest exercises Russia has ever undertaken in that country, Belarus, just to the north. So they got them on the north. They got the Navy to the south with, with uh, major amphibious assault capability in those ships. Uh, and sure, it's, it's the squeeze, at least through intimidation, if not actual action. And on the Ukrainian side of the border, they have put uh, a very large portion of their forces into the field as well. So you've got two forces, each combat ready, in the field, right across that border, a few hundred miles. Uh, an errant shell, a deliberate provo pro provocation. You know, it, it is a very touch-and-go situation right now. Uh, and Ukraine, you know, is beginning really to grip down. People still don't think this is going to be an all-out war. They don't think Putin is that uh, crazy. They do, I think, appreciate the way uh, Biden and NATO have raised the alarm, stiffened their spines, rallied the, the international community against what they are calling Russian aggression, what they believe is that here as well. But there's no question the tension continues to escalate. Now, how long can that go on? You know, uh, those troops can stay in the field. It'll get expensive. Uh, and will kind of mis unbalance the strategic posture of Russian forces. But Vlad Vladimir Putin might just want to play the long game, keep, keep everybody guessing for a while, uh, and perhaps even wait until things calm down or get what he wants diplomatically. He, it's his cards to play right now, and he's almost got all the pieces on the table. Meanwhile, the diplomatic meetings uh, do continue uh, today in France. Uh, what's the latest, and are there any signs of progress there? You know, Kier, there's no signs of progress coming out, out of those meetings. There was some hope that uh, the conversations that French President Emmanuel Macron had with Vladimir Putin in Moscow and with President Zelensky here in Ukraine might, you know, start the ball rolling a little bit. But one of the things that, that was essential was that the representative, the, it's not heads of state who are meeting in Berlin. There's four countries, France, Germany, Russia, and Ukraine, but lower level advisors. But one thing that was hoped out of that meeting to get some uh, momentum going or continuing was that the Ukrainian representative would talk directly to the Russian representative, and that's not going to happen. Uh, Ukraine doesn't recognize the Russian-backed separatists. And Russia says, you know, the war that's happening in eastern Ukraine that's killed 14,000 people over the past eight years, that's an internal Ukrainian problem. So the two major players here, Russia and Ukraine, aren't even going to be talking to each other. They're going to have to be turning to uh, representative from France, turning to the representative to Germany, and you, you aren't going to get that much going. Look, the, the key question still is... You know, Russia is making these gigantic demands. Ukraine can never join NATO. Uh, other countries in the near to Russia, you know, must not become fully integrated members of NATO. And NATO must actually withdraw troops from countries that have been NATO members for 25 years. None of that is going to happen. But is that uh, uh, an opening bid, as it will, uh, as it were, for Russia to say, OK, Ukraine, you've got to give us something. You've got to give us some kind of control over those breakaway eastern segments of your country where we've been Russian-backed, Russian-armed separatists. Uh, that is the question. Can Ukraine give anything up that would lower the tensions? Really, it, it's Vladimir Putin's card to play, but the response from Ukraine will determine what happens next.
Well, something else is happening. The Pentagon confirming that U.S. troops in Poland are preparing to help evacuate Americans in Ukraine. If a war does break out, what does that involve? And were there lessons learned from the evacuation of Afghanistan, Terry? Absolutely. Well, you see very publicly leaking the word that the United States government and the U.S. military is already preparing to evacuate Americans uh, from a theater of war if it comes to that. Uh, the, one of the harsh criticisms and deserved uh, on the Biden administration is they had a year. Uh, president Biden came into office declaring, I am going to be the president who withdraws all American troops from Afghanistan in January of 2021. Come August, September, October, uh, the country wasn't ready. The government was not ready to do that in an effective way. Yes, uh, the Taliban swept across the country, but uh, it seems that the contingency plans that were in place were nowhere near sufficient. The State Department pa pointing fingers at the Pentagon, the Pentagon pointing fingers at the State Department. They don't want a repeat of any of that here in Ukraine. Should it come to that, there are 10 to 15,000 Americans living here. Uh, we talked to a, a few of them, and most of them at this point want to stay, but they are making contingency plans. Uh, that said, you can imagine, you know, in this city, you get one shell, one bomb dropping, and those roads are going to be absolutely packed with refugees streaming west towards Poland. So how, how people get out, how the United States facilitates that from Poland, and if there is war, one of the big questions is, you know, obviously the Ukrainian army might be able to do something, but it would likely be some kind of insurgency in order to combat whatever Russian forces were occupying whatever part of Ukraine. Some of that might be based in a NATO country like Poland. Uh, and then, you know, what does Russia do if they feel that there are forces threatening them across a NATO border? That's the worst case scenario. Certainly, all of this is now premised on, on what Vladimir Putin wants to do and whether or not the sanctions that are being discussed, the united front that NATO has presented, and the rallying of world opinion against Vladimir Putin. He's cost his country a lot. How many people are going to want to really do business for a long-term prospect with Russia? Europe's going to look for, to diversify its energy sources, and there's going to be a lot more price to pay for what Vladimir Putin has already done. Does he really want to go all the way? Those are the kinds of questions we are waiting for answers here to, uh, both on the diplomatic and on the military side. Kira? Well, we couldn't think of a better uh, journalist or historian to be covering this uh, story for us. But, Terry, any word on when you're coming back, do I dare ask? Well, it, you know, it, it looks like this weekend. It, it, it looks like I may be coming back this weekend, but we're still talking about that. Uh, All I, right. I, my wife would certainly like me back. <laughs> I could be back for the Super Bowl, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. We would too, Terry, without a doubt. All right, we'll be talking Super Bowl Sunday right around the corner. I hope you're able to watch it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.